Hi everyone! In this short video I will show you how you can use native Google Calendar integration to search, create and update events in your Google Calendars connected to your active chat account. To use this feature in your chatbot first you need to connect your Google account and please keep in mind that uh, Google account connections is on per bot basis in active chat so you can have multiple chatbots in your account connected to different Google accounts. So you just go to settings integrations and click the gear icon in the Google tile exactly like you do to connect Google Sheets that we discussed in the previous video. Once you do this you will see the list of your calendars in the Google Calendar tab in Google Settings in Active Chat together with their IDs and by these IDs you will be able to choose the required calendar in the blocks in your flow builder. Here is one of my Google calendars uh, that I connected to the chatbot. And you can see two events in the calendar set for tomorrow, meeting Arta and meeting John. We will build a simple chatbot that will check the availability of a specific time slot in your calendar. And if this time slot is available, you will be able to create a new event with your chatbot or update an existing event. So let's jump straight into the flow. The skill is named GC1 and it will be triggered with GC1 event and it starts with a couple of questions like date, saving user's response to date attribute with predefined quick reply for April 7th 2020, then start time, saving the response to start time user attribute again with predefined quick response 16. 4 p.m. and end time. These date, start and end parameters refer to the time slot that we want to check with the chatbot, if this time slot is available or no. So we're collecting some data and by default it will be 7th of April 2020 from 4 p.m. to 5 p.m. in 24 hour format. And then we are using this GC search block. This Google Integration blocks live here in integrations and you can see GC create, GC search, GC update together with Google Sheets blocks, GS gallery and GS search and GS update. So let's check the editor for GC search block. First of all, you have to choose the calendar ID and I'm choosing the first one, the main calendar for my account. And then you are setting date for the interval that you want to check and time. You have start date, you have end date, we call it date min and date max, and you have time min and time max for start time and end time of the event. Again, please note that I'm putting here values from my attributes that I collected with these listen blocks. Date, start time, and end time. I put it right here in this date and time parameters. A tricky thing could be this time zone parameter. It shows the time zone of your calendar and you can check which time zone your calendar is in here. Mine shows GMT plus 3 hours. So I'm putting 3 here. If it was for example GMT minus 2, I would put minus 2 here. Please pay attention to this. This is important to get the right time and date for your events. And then when we execute this GC search block, I'm using GC3 system attribute to check it for true or false. GC3 will be set every time you run GC search block and it will show you if this time slot starting on the start date, start time and ending on the end date and time is available. That means there are no events in this time slot. I advise you to use uh, some predefined time slots like 15 minutes, 30 minutes or maybe one hour for your appointments, for your calls so that it is easier for you to check the availability of each specific time slot. So I'm checking if GC3 is equal to true. And if it is true, I display the text this slot seems to be free. And I offer a button like schedule appointment that will add an appointment in this time slot. Otherwise, if GC3 is equal to false or just not true, I go to another block and I say, okay, there is an event in this slot. And then again, I'm using a couple of system attributes like GC event summary, GC event start time, 
GC event start date, GC event end time, and GC event end date. You can find the complete list of these attributes here in uh, our manuals in at docsactivechart.ai with GC event ID, GC event summary, and so on and so forth. So, before we continue with uh, creating and updating new events, let's see how this block GC search works. I'm going to my chatbot messenger and trigger this GC1 skill. Again, here is my calendar. Tomorrow is Wednesday, 8th of April, and I have two events here, one from 2 p.m. to 2.30 and another from 4.30 to 5 p.m. So I'll change the date to tomorrow. And start time, yeah, okay, it will be 4 p.m., 16. And end time of my time slot in question will be 5 p.m., 17. Yep, and my bot displays me, there's an event in this slot, meeting John. Let's check, exactly, it's meeting John, there is no description yet. And bot says it starts at 4.30 p.m. and ends at 5 p.m. on the 8th of April. And I have three buttons in this text block. If I check the flow builder, you can see that choose another slot takes me to GC1 skill again, remove event takes me to another block and change event takes me somewhere else. So let's try another option. I click choose another slot. When I do this, what's happening here? I'm sending this event GC1 and you can see that GC1 event is being caught at the same skill. So it actually restarts the skill from the very beginning. I did this, uh, I have multiple uh, buttons where I want to jump to the beginning of this skill. So I'm using this send block instead of connecting uh, the button with a long line back to this text block to make my flow builder more clean and easier to understand. So I'll try again tomorrow. 2020, April 8th, and I'll choose 3 p.m. as start time and 3.30 as end time. The chatbot is checking my calendar and tells me that, okay, this slot seems to be free and I can schedule an appointment and put it there in this slot. Let's see how this can be done. Going back to my flow builder, once I click this button, schedule appointment, in this text block, I go to another set of questions. The chatbot will ask for the name of the event. It will be used as event summary. Just keep in mind that every event in Google has this event summary and event description. Event summary is usually less than one line and event description can be as long as you would like to. I believe there is a certain limit. And event description can be quite long with links, uh, with uh, places, with detailed descriptions, and so on. So, the chatbot is asking for event summary that will be used as event name, saving the user's response to event name system attribute, sorry, not system, regular attribute, and then asking for detailed description and saving the user's response to event description attribute. Then we give a confirmation to the user, got it, add into your calendar, and we use another block, GC create, again from our integrations group, GC create here. And in this block, we set calendar ID, choosing this from the list of our calendars available in our account, and then we set start time, end time, start date, and end date. Notice that I'm using the same date, start time, and end time, attributes that were populated by specific values in the beginning of my skill, when my chatbot was asking which time slot I would like to check. So this didn't change, so I can use this start time, end time, date, and date. And then I'm using event summary, event name as summary, and I use event description as event description. Again, I'm putting three hours as a time zone, 
and I'm adding my email andrewdetectivechat.ai as creator email. Once this is done, I'm displaying a confirmation to the user, done, and again a button to add another event, triggering this send GC1 event, restarting my skill from the very beginning. Let's check how it works on Messenger. Okay, so this slot tomorrow from 3 to 3.30 p.m. seems to be free, and I'll schedule an appointment here. The name will be Meeting Andrew, and the description will be Discussing Project Details. Yep, the bot is adding it to my calendar, and if I check my calendar, you can see the event popping up here, meeting Andrew, from 3 to 3.30 p.m., discussing project details. Okay, so now let's check how we can delete events and make changes to events. So, if I check the same time slot again, I will click this add another button to restart my skill. And the date again will be tomorrow. And the time slot that I have just filled from 3 pm to 3.30 pm. Yeah, and it looks like there's an event in this slot, meeting Andrew. So I would like to change this event, so I'm clicking change event. You can change everything with Active Chat integration. You can change uh, event name, event description, event start time and date, end time and date, and so on. But for this uh, demo, I choose to change only event name and event description. So instead of meeting Andrew, it will be meeting James. And event description was discussing project, so I'll put discussing yet another project. Again, the bot is making changes in my calendar, and I can see that instead of meeting Andrew, now it's meeting James, discussing yet another project. The same time slot, the same starting and ending time. The only change is event name and event description. How did I do this in the flow? Once we have this text block displaying there's an event in this slot with data about this event, we have this change event button and change event button is taking us to these questions like new name, we save this to event name attribute new description, we save the response to event description attribute send in the confirmation and then using GC update block again from this integrations group with our calendar ID and here we use event ID. Event ID is another system attribute that is set every time when you have a successful search with GC search. And it contains the ID, the Google's ID, for the event that uh, sits in your time slot. So I'm using this event ID to make changes to a specific event. And then I'm using start time, end time, start date and end date from these system attributes that contain the values for this specific event. I do not want to change this yet, but definitely when you will be experimenting with uh, these blocks, you can change dates, you can change times, you can make any changes that you like to. I'm just changing summary and description. I'm using event name and event description that I got from my chatbot user here in these listen blocks. Again, creator email will be admin at activechat.ai and time zone, the same time zone, 3 hours for the GMT plus 3. Please pay attention that this remove attribute is set to false. If I set this to true, this event will be removed from my calendar instead of making changes. By default it uh, is set to false. Pay attention not to change it occasionally so that you do not mess up with your calendars. So let's go back to Messenger. Yeah, we have change this event successfully. Instead of meeting Andrew, it's meeting James now. And last but not least, let's see how we can remove the event. For example, 
I can see that I have this meeting art event at 2 p.m. Let's check this time slot for tomorrow from 2 p.m. to 2.30 p.m. It will be 2020, April 8th. It will be 14 for 2 p.m. to 14.30. Yep, and it looks like there is an event in this slot, meeting Arta. So I'll remove this event. What happens when I click this button? Let's refer to our flow. This text block, there is an event in this slot with event data. Remove event takes us to another text block. Are you sure this cannot be undone? And yes, this cannot be undone. So make sure to ask for some kind of confirmation from each other user before making changes to calendars. This can be quite important. And two buttons here, yes, remove it or choose another slot. Choose another slot will take us again to the beginning of this skill with send, with send block sending GC1 event. But if the customer chooses to remove the event, we're using this GC update event. And the data that you put here doesn't matter. The only thing that matter is calendar ID, event ID, and this remove trigger set to true. Once you do this, you can display the confirmation to the user, done, and the event will be gone from your calendar. So I'm clicking remove event. The bot is asking me for the confirmation. Yeah, remove it. And we can see this event disappearing from my calendar. All of it was done with a chatbot, and you can see the skill is quite simple just like maybe 20 or 22 blocks doing complete calendar management, like checking time slots, changing events, adding events, removing events, and so on. Feel free to use this, feel free to experiment, and stay tuned to your home assignment for this unit.